Renowned economist Theodore Levitt once said, creativity is thinking up new things. Innovation is doing new things. But what if your innovation is hindered by supply chain issues? What then? Do you just ditch the idea and move on to the next project? Nope. <laughs> Engineers always find a way, right? And sometimes the companies that supply our parts understand our pain about supply chain woes and speed up their innovation to help our creativity find its place in the world. And this is the case with Digi XB3 and Digi XBRR. When supply chains had the XB3 lead times lagging, Digi said, let us see what we can do. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I'm joined by Quinn Jones from Digi, and we're investigating the benefits that Digi XBRR wireless modules can bring to your next design. We also take a closer look at the migration path from Digi XB3 to Digi XBRR, the design aspects you should keep in mind when moving from Digi XB3 to to the RR and how the Digi XB multi-programmer can help you get exactly the configuration you need for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Digi. Hi Quinn, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, good to be here. Excellent. We're talking about the Digi XB3 and the Digi XBRR today, but Quinn, for my audience who may not know, give us an introduction about both of these chipsets. Yeah, great. So the XB3 was built in 2019, so I should maybe give you some better background. We've been doing RF modules for over 20 years, and in 2019, we came out with our XB3 module, which was very innovative. It supports multiple protocols, supports ZigBee, 802.15.4, Digimesh, as well as Bluetooth. And it's available in three different form factors, our micro mount, our SMT, and our through-hole form factors. We added MicroPython on it for edge computing, which gives it lots of advantages to having MicroPython on a product for that layer of intelligence, and then great for configuration and commissioning. It's built on a 90 nanometer technology, which has been difficult in the last year or so with allocation issues. We have long lead times right now with the Silicon Labs chip that's used on it, the FR32 MG12. As we looked into this, there were a lot of applications where MicroPython wasn't needed, but the XB3 has been just a workhorse for us, great radio. With the supply chain issues, we realized that we could either sit and wait for additional units to be available, or we could try to innovate and come up with some options to help keep customers in production. So the XB3 was hit hard with allocation issues, and we decided to innovate and came out with the XBRR, which is based on 40 nanometer technology, which is more readily available. We have initial inventory available with different distributors such as Mauser, and the lead times are much less than the XB3. Excellent. Now, when it comes to the XBRR, Quinn, what kind of specifications are we looking at here? With the protocols, it supports the Zigbee 802.15.4 or Digimesh, so same as the XB3. We have our trust fence security options on it, same as the XB3. Same form factors, micro mount, through hole, and surface mount. There are some differences between the RR and the XB3. On the GPIO or general purpose IO, there are some differences. The digital pins 10 and 11 aren't available. There's still GPIO available, but pins 10 and 11 aren't available nor the commands that are associated with that. But it still has the same temperature rating, negative 40 plus 85. We've still got the low power and high power variants. It makes it just easy to move from one to the another. And as well, with all of our XB modules, we have the pre-certifications like FCC, IC, for example, and we certify those in other regions. So more of those are coming as well. Excellent. So, Quinn, if my audience is thinking about moving from the Digi XB3 to the RR, what kind of things should they keep in mind? First of all, the part numbers are different. So we've got a migration guide that will show the corresponding part numbers. Another thing that we always like to bring up is although discouraged customers measure the boot time and start their application based on that timing, we don't recommend that customer uses boot time 
as this can change with the processor, even a firmware load. Sleep currents will vary. This is important to keep in mind, as, especially if you have a battery powered application. And then the FCC ID has changed. That's pretty typical with a new module. So speaking of BLE, can you talk a bit about the Bluetooth aspect of Digi XBRR? Yeah, absolutely. So with Bluetooth on the XBRR, you still have the ability to configure and provision via Bluetooth. A couple different options to do that. You can use our XB mobile app as well. We have customers who build their own application so they can use the XBRR module to configure and troubleshoot modules in the field. Data communication between the UART and SPI interface continues to be available on the XBRR. What's not available is any of the advanced functionality with Bluetooth that would be programmed or used with programming or MicroPython. This also includes beaconing. Okay, so what about the GPIO element of Digi XBRR? Yeah, so as I've mentioned already, the digital pins 10 and 11 aren't available, but there's still quite a few different digital pins available for use. You can still read RSSI by doing a DB command We've included on this slide, the reference voltage, which this has changed with the XBRR. And this is good to know. So if you program the XB3 and are expecting it to have the same values, this has changed. So you'll need to recalculate your values, especially if you're reading an analog sensor. So Quinn, what about the firmware compatibility between these two? Yeah, so the firmware is different between the two modules. It's not interchangeable. This means the correct firmware has to be loaded on the corresponding hardware. It's pretty self-evident if you're doing it locally through one of our tools like XCTU, but if you're doing an over-the-air update, you'll need to map out what needs to go to what, especially if you have a mixed network. I say a mixed network of XB3 and XBRRs deployed in the field. And the best thing to do there is check with the manual for instructions or to reach out to the Digi representative to discuss. Okay, so what if I want to configure the XB and test it? What all is involved? So we have our XB configuration test utility tool. It lets you do a bunch of things, ranging from range test to even a built-in spectrum analyzer. So you can use it to configure all the parameters of an XB module very intuitively and graphically based, and then create a golden unit. And this can be used as a profile for your production units. And the great thing about that is once you have that saved image, you can then flash it on other modules in a production setting. It's also great for updating firmware. For example, using our Firmware Explorer, it's simple and straightforward to find the right firmware for your module. Lastly, the XCTU makes visualizing a network super easy. When you analyze a mesh network, you can view all the components or all the players in a mesh network and then analyze who's doing what. And this is especially helpful if you're troubleshooting or analyzing network performance. So how would I go about programming the XB? So we have an excellent tool called our XB Multiprogrammer that can do batch programming versus just one-offs with our XCTU software. So after you create this golden unit, you can rapidly flash or deploy units with that same image. With the XB Multiprogrammer, you can configure multiple units together. So instead of just doing six at a time, that increases your volume or capacity. The units also have interchangeable header boards with all of our different XB form factors. This is great, especially for those involved in this process where you've had to do this. You, everybody knows that these wear out over time and as well gives you the flexibility to swap the header boards for the different form factors. So what kind of materials do you guys have to help designers up and running with the Digi XB? We have all sorts of different materials to help designers or engineers get up to speed with our modules. We've got a great portal, which is linked on this slide. We've got our configuration and test tools. One of the items I would like to point out is our XBRR migration guide. This gives engineers the information they need to view what they need to do to move over to the XBRR. Also, it lists the part numbers needed in that transition. So, Quinn, what markets do you see being a good fit for XBRR? There are all sorts of markets that the XBRR is perfectly suited for. We've listed a few here. Smart City is one where we see a lot of applications. Outdoor lighting is one of those. Commercial lighting applications as well. Commercial lighting, we see a lot of environmental sensor monitoring. Industrial is one where we see a lot of applications. Tank level monitoring, industrial control, for example. Medical, we do a lot of equipment monitoring. 
Renewable is probably one of our largest. We do a lot of with solar, which is uh, very suited for a Zigbee or 802.15.4 network. Okay, so let's talk about part numbers. When it comes to XB3 and XBRR, there's a difference between the part numbers that we should be aware of, right? Correct. Yeah, that totally makes sense, right? The XB3 and the XBRR have different part numbers. We've gone through in this table and listed the most popular XB3 part numbers, gave a description of the RR part, and then the migration part or the part for the XBRR. There are some parts that weren't created on the XBRR. And again, we analyzed the most popular ones and migrated those over. It ends up being just over 90% of the parts we've created. So it accounts for the vast majority of the XB3 parts. I would mention distributors like Mauser already have some of the micro mount parts in stock. And we're in the process of shipping out SMT and through hole modules to round out the offering. Okay, cool. Now, Gwen, what kind of development kits do you guys have for the XB? Yeah, great question. So development kits are probably one of the basic things that we recommend customers or engineers start as they evaluate our products. Development kits are coming for the XBRR, similar to the XB3. Right now, customers can purchase XBRR modules to start the evaluation process within their products. Customers can also purchase interface boards and modules to create their own development environment, which is basically like a development kit. You can see the part numbers listed here, which makes it easy to get started. An interesting note in the development kits is that you get whatever antenna connectors that we offer, which is the U.FL antenna connector. If you purchase the interface boards and the modules separately, you can copy the exact configuration that you have in your product so that your testing will be kind of an apples to apple testing, which makes the transition to the XBRR very easy. That makes sense. Now, what if a designer needs a bit more help with their Digi XBRR design to get it out the door faster? Can you guys help us in that case? Absolutely, yes. In fact, we realize that you know there are a lot of companies that struggle with resources or that have their engineers tied up in higher priority projects. We have a team of engineers within our wireless design service team that are ready and willing to help a customer with as little or as much as needed. So they jump on a project, discuss the differences between the XB3 and the XBRR. They're very flexible. And again, it's all optional, right? It's there to help a company with as little or as much assistance they might need. And this ranges from uh, full-on PCB design to assistance with recertifications, all aspects of a wireless project. I just recommend that if you have questions about this, please reach out to DigiCell's rep and we can schedule a rapid redesign consultation with you. Excellent. Well, Quinn, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Digi. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.